Good afternoon, Minnesota Twins fans. My name is Seth Stoes of Twins Daily and TwinsDaily.com, welcoming you to an all-new episode of Twin Spotlight. Uh, this is actually episode 40. Uh, very excited about that. It's season two, or I guess off-season two, uh, the fifth episode we've had so far this year. We've talked to Jose Miranda, uh, Kalai Rosario, Bailey Ober, and last week we talked to Simeon Woods Richardson. And today we're going to bring in our next guest. And again, we're live on Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube. If you've got any questions for me or our guest, uh, be sure to ask those in the comments and we will get to those as you ask them. Um, and look forward to a fun show. Uh, so with that, let's introduce our next guest. A quick uh, quick show here. Our guest is Twins right-handed pitching prospect Josh Winder. Uh, he was drafted in the seventh round in 2018 out of Virginia Military Institute. Um, where three, uh, he would be the third player to reach the major league should that happen. Um, and obviously, Twins fans, we're hoping it does, right? Um, but he spent this year, he split between uh, AA Wichita, the Wind Surge, and AAA St. Paul. He also pitched in the Futures game. Uh, we've had some stories on Twins Daily going back to his 2019 season in Cedar Rapids. Steve Boer wrote an article on him at that point. And really since then, he's been a feature or a, a frequenter of our monthly uh, Pitcher of the Month articles. So uh, he's won it a couple times in 2019. He won it again, um, you know, earlier this year in June uh, when he was with Wichita. He got promoted to St. Paul right after that and did great as well. So without further ado, this is already a long intro. Uh, let's bring in our guest and join the star of the show tonight, and that's Josh Winder. Josh, how are you today? I'm doing well, Seth. Thanks for having me on, man. Absolutely. Finally, finally get to do this. Uh, you know, what a year it's been for you. Uh, just kind of go back to spring training. You get that call. You get to be part of the depth camp at big league camp. Um, how did you find out the news and, and what's going through your mind, you know, knowing you're going to get to go to spring training with the big leaguers? Yeah, it was actually pretty late in the game. It was, um, I want to say the first week of February. So in my head, I was kind of already preparing myself for another month or so at home and kind of just continuing to work and kind of finding guys to work with guys to throw to throw against and all that stuff. And I got a call beginning of February saying, um, they needed me down in Florida, um, to throw some innings down there. So I was super pumped to like get down there and of course throw with the big guys and all that stuff and kind of see how big league camp was. So it was a really cool experience to, see guys I see play on TV and get to pitch against them and pick their brains and all that stuff. So it was, it was awesome. Absolutely. And uh, I know you did actually get into quite a few games in spring training. You and uh, uh, Matt Cantorino were both uh, on that same group and got into some late innings and stuff, but I think you even made a start. So, you know, is there some piece of advice maybe or anything you read or saw from one of the, the veterans that you would, you know, kind of, kind of take into your season? Um, it wasn't necessarily advice, but just watching those guys work and how, I guess, just dialed in their work is and their routine, um, just from how many years they're doing it. So just like watching Kenta on an everyday basis, his routine he goes through and all the stuff that works for him and then seeing Barrios, um, work out and do his throwing routine and all that stuff. So it was kind of eye opening to see like so many guys doing so many different things, but also it made complete sense because you find what works for you and just continue to do it and get better at it. Um, so if you find something you believe in and just stick to it and do you basically. So that was really cool to see all those guys do that. And I didn't really know what to expect going down there. I wasn't sure if I was going to get in many games, just being a late addition, but I was super pleased and kind of surprised that I was um, getting my name called, get my number called. So it was really cool to get in there and have that start against the uh, the Pirates in Bradenton uh, the last week of the year or uh, the spring training. Um, get to face a big league lineup, see how they adjust my stuff and all that. So that was a really important part of my season, kind of preparing me for um, getting sent to Double A and facing those minor league guys. Were you surprised, and maybe maybe not, with the missed season, all of that, you know, the invite to spring training, were you surprised you completely jumped high A 
and went right to double A. And not only that, Ramon Borrego had you as the opening day starter. Yeah, of course, that was that was a great honor. And it was really, really cool to share that opening day and um, kind of get out there first and kind of set the tone for the year. It was really, really neat. Um, I don't know. I, I didn't really concern myself with where I'd be at that much. It wasn't too much as a, of a surprise because in my mind, the 2020 season would have been my high A year. Um, so I kind of like had my high A season, I guess, in my head. So it didn't feel like as big of a jump to double A because I saw a lot of guys I was seeing in Cedar Rapids and low A in 2019. So I was facing a lot of the same guys. So it kind of felt kind of comfortable. So it wasn't um, a huge, huge jump for me. Um, just because everybody was kind of in the same boat with that lost season. And so I'm sure it put a lot of pressure on like front offices and farm directors and all that stuff to kind of really figure out where their guys fit in. Um, so it was, it wasn't, it wasn't too crazy of a jump. I know low A to double A seems really big, but um, I felt very prepared and I didn't think the twins pushed me too fast or anything like that, especially seeing those big league um, ABs in the spring and all that stuff. I knew I was kind of, kind of ready for it. And um, I was very excited to get that opportunity. Absolutely. And not only that, you did great. I mean, I think you had an ERA under two uh, in Wichita and you spent about two months there, which I mean, you almost have to go. And, and it was a weird season with the schedules. It was, I think you only played about five or six teams. So you got guys that got to see you a second and even a, a third time over two months but um you know talk a little bit about wichita obviously a first year affiliate of the twins but in a new stadium and just the atmosphere around there what was it like for you uh down there yeah i definitely have a special place in my heart for wichita um it was a really really cool experience they treated us very well um the new stadium's awesome i miss that stadium already uh, but it was really cool and the community really surrounded that team and really embraced that team. We had great turnout, great fans, all that stuff. And, um, I loved all my teammates as well. It was a really, really good group, group of guys there. Um, it felt like everybody was kind of buying into what we were, um, working towards and playing, playing baseball hard the right way, all that stuff. And, um, the coaching staff was great as well. I worked with, uh, Louie and Virgil um before and ryan smith so it was cool to have some familiarity there and um be comfortable with the staff and be able to work with them and kind of collaborate and all that stuff and um i enjoyed ramon as well he was great the whole time so um it was a lot of fun that first half of the season was was a blast and then i think it was even right on july 1st both you and uh jose miranda got the call to move up to triple a which Again, going into the year, I don't know what you're expecting. I suppose just anything can happen. But, um, you know, what was the the promotion like? And obviously both of you, Miranda in his first game, you threw, I think, a, a no-hitter into the fifth or sixth inning, your first game with St. Paul. Um, how nice was it to make that strong first impression? I was, it was really cool. It was really cool. And I don't know, I guess a little bit of heightened focus there. Um, you're kind of getting there in the middle of the year, so maybe guys are taking their foot off the gas and you can kind of be the new blood in the locker room and all that stuff. But um, it wasn't. I wasn't expecting anything different from Jose based on the year he had. So um, it was really cool to see him do that the first night. And obviously, I don't know if it took pressure off me or put more pressure on to perform well, but um, it all worked out on that first start. Absolutely. And then again, I do want to mention that's the voice of Josh Winder for you, those of you listening on the Twins Daily Podcast, which you'll be able to download anytime uh, shortly after this. Uh, and also, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, Twins Daily, please feel free to leave a comment. Even if you just want to say, as Nicholas does here, hi. Hello. <laughs> or, uh, you know, more important, go Minnesota Twins 2022. So I want to jump into uh, kind of the same topic, but, you know, you got invited to go to the Futures game, which, uh, you know, in Denver, that had to be a pretty neat thing. And also uh, your manager there, I believe, was Latroy Hawkins, who had you had a lot of interaction with him over the, you know, two years you'd been in the organization? Yeah, I actually got um, to spend a lot of time with him this spring. Um, he kind of took me under his wing a little bit and kind of uh, just – 
giving me some advice on how to pitch out of the bullpen, how to start and kind of how to manage all that stuff. And face, facing big league guys, obviously, for the first time was an adjustment. And LaTroy did a great job of like reaching out to me and uh, Matt Canarino being kind of the younger guys um, there and kind of just imparting some wisdom and um, just kind of putting us in the right direction to make sure we don't get lost in the shuffle there. So um, it was really, really nice to see him down there. And of course, for him to get that honor is amazing for him. Um, and he did a great job throughout the whole game and kind of managing the game, and all that stuff, letting us have fun, letting us be us and um, go play some baseball. So, um, but that whole experience was just an absolute whirlwind um, and still feels like a dream almost um, because of how fast it happened. Cause you fly in on Saturday, play the game Sunday during the day, then you're out on Monday. So like, there's just so much going on in that three day span that it just flies by. Um, but it was, it was an amazing experience and it was even cooler because my family got to come out. Um, my girlfriend and some of some family friends were able to come there too. So to be able to share that experience with those people was, was amazing because I wouldn't be there without them and all that support and everything they've given me through the years, all the games they've sat through, all the road trips they've been on. Um, it was it was very cool to share that experience and kind of explore Denver after the game as well with them. Very good. Again, we welcome your comments and feedback. And uh, you might be fam more familiar with this one than me, but uh, Andrew, and familiar last name, says Rob Virginia Mill. Nice. That's my brother. He's at um, BMI right now. So um, Rob Virginia Mill, class of 19. Shout out to all my brother rats, all that stuff. So awesome. <laughs> Very good. And we'll get to that shortly, but I kind of want to just kind of end the 2021 conversation just with um, you were shut down. I want to say in early August, um, I, th I think some shoulder tightness and such, uh, and you went down to Fort Myers. Uh, how, how are you doing now? Where are you at? Uh, I know you were sent home, you said maybe a month ago, uh, which tells you they think you're ready for uh, hopefully a regular off season. Yeah. Yeah, so I was um, just dealing with some some shoulder issues um, there. I think it was just a lot of throwing after um, having that season off and then just being in multiple different places there. Um, for the, It got a little crazy there for a month, getting called up, Futures game, and being all over the place. Um, so we were super cautious with it. Um, probably could have thrown through it, but um, we took the cautious approach and thinking long-term about my career, which – I'm super grateful for that um, that conversation was being had and um, they let me kind of make sure I got right before throwing through it and uh, causing something worse. Um, so I think I got down to Florida maybe in August and was able to build up to face some hitters um, towards the back end of September and October. So I got to competition shape and showed the ability to kind of throw multiple innings um, and they the training staff there and the coaching staff didn't didn't think I needed to show any more and kind of give me some time off and send me home. So I got home beginning of October and I've just been continuing to um, do a lot of rehab um, routines and um, different exercises and all that stuff just to make sure I get my shoulder in a healthy place and um, make it stronger for the future. So um, I'll start throwing up here um, next week. So um hoping to feel good and expecting to feel good on the way back so all right well let's uh we're talking with josh winder here twins pitching prospect who did reach triple a st paul this year um one step away uh from the big leagues uh should that come i do want to talk you mentioned your, your brother uh at virginia military academy i believe your dad did he play ball at vmi as well um what was it about vmi that was that made it the right choice for you yeah, I, I don't know if I want to do this now, but I'm going to out my dad. He did not play baseball at Virginia Military Institute. He did not go to VMI at all. Um, so he's seen that online. So I don't know if he's going to be upset at me for um, outing him as a fraud. But um, yeah, he, he didn't he didn't do anything uh, military wise. People assume that just because it's kind of a non-traditional path to where I am. Um, but VMI kind of checked all the boxes for me with what I was looking for, um, coming out of high school, I was kind of looking for a smaller school close to home and somewhere I could play baseball. 
and had a good degree for my future. So VMI checked all those boxes and they offered me um, January of my junior year of high school. Uh, so it was actually before I threw a single varsity pitch in high school. Um, so they got me early. They saw me at a camp, um, like a Christmas camp over, over the winter and didn't waste any time. Got me on campus, showed me around and um, made an offer there and I accepted it and it, I think it paid off, um, at least I think so, uh, right now. And it really prepared me for um, the challenges of pro ball and all that stuff. Made me really tough, made me uh, very disciplined and everything like that. So um, really prepared me for my life after, after college. Um, so, yeah. You know, I always thought, and it's, you know, this is the first season that Elizabethan hasn't been a Twins affiliate. And you spent that 2018 season there after you got drafted in the seventh round. I always thought that was such a nice, even if the college pitchers were, you know, the numbers didn't matter. I really felt like it was a good place for guys to just kind of get out on their own, maybe for the first time. Right. Yeah, that was um, that was a really good setup in Elizabeth 10, kind of introduction to pro ball. Um, still felt kind of college summer ball ish. Um, so it wasn't too big of like a jolt or, uh, uh, a change in your life, but, um, yeah, it was, it's, I, I had a lot of fun there. We ended up winning a championship there, which I'll remember forever and be one of my favorite baseball memories. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's a fun little league and it's fun to tell stories about the Appalachian league and all that stuff. So. Yeah, I'd say Twins minor leaguers have had some good stories from there. I want to go way back now. You, I believe you're in Richmond, uh, Virginia, and I, I believe that's where you've grown up. Uh, what are your earliest memories of, of playing ball? I mean, do you remember, you know, coach pitch or t-ball or anything like that? And and what was it about baseball that you think drove you to it? Yeah, so um, I have cousins who are two or three years older than me and my older brother. And they were really big into travel baseball when they were really young. So I think that kind of rubbed off on me and my older brother. Um, so we st I remember playing kid pitch when we were four or five years old at a school right down the street from us. And um, my dad was the coach and he always knew how to throw it like exactly perfect that I could like run my bat into it and run around the bases and all that stuff. Um, and I, I don't know, one of my biggest memories is the game he wasn't there, ended up striking out because I had someone different throwing to me. I remember being so, like, bummed out at home, like, <laughs> face down and, like, my my meal just, like, really bummed out. Um, so I guess that was kind of a sign that um, I should probably pick up the ball and go to the mound as opposed to stay in the box. But um, I do have that just vivid memory of being so disappointed of striking out. Yeah, no, I get that. I mean, it's one of those things, Joe Maurer, in four years of high school ball, I think he struck out once. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's it's terrifying. Um, so talk a little bit. You mentioned uh, that you had your VMI offer before you even pitched on varsity, which tells me you've spent a couple years in JV and then probably two years on the varsity. Um, did you only pitch or were you still hitting at that point? Yeah, so they were making, trying to make me a shortstop there for my freshman and sophomore year. So I was playing second base and shortstop. Um, so all 6'3", six, 6'4", six, of me at the time, 180 pounds, was trying to figure out how to move my body around the infield. So I was always a really good practice player, but in the games, I think I ended up averaging like an air, air and a half a game. So it really wasn't quite my spot, but... Um, I went to a high school that is um, historically very good uh, at baseball and uh, turns out a lot of a lot of good college prospects and a couple guys have ended up going to the pros. Um, so it wasn't necessarily that I was particularly bad. It was just we had a lot of guys who could throw um, pretty well for our varsity team. So I started pitching a little bit more my sophomore year and then kind of saw – a velo bump from my sophomore to junior year, which kind of convinces convinced the coaches and kind of make me focus a little bit more on the, on the mound. 
Sure. And then you mentioned the decision to go to BMI. Um, and you, like you said, played on some pretty decent teams. You know, overall, what was that, uh, the playing in that league, uh, the maturing from getting there as a freshman to, uh, I believe you went there three years, mm -hmm. um, to year one to year three. Uh, what was what was your progression? Yeah, so um, we play. Uh, I ended up being a weekend starter from my freshman year to my junior year. So I started out as the Sunday guy um, my freshman year. And the Sunday role usually is just eat innings. So I'd go out there and I'd throw as much as I could until I wasn't effective anymore. So I really learned how to be efficient and kind of go deep in games and how to like dig deep those last few innings. Um, so I think that was really, really important for my development as a pitcher um, to face better competition and then having to extend myself for as much as possible. Um, that's something I take a lot of pride in as a pitcher is being able to stay out there a really long time and throw innings and be there every single time out. Um, so that was kind of what I learned my freshman year. And then I slowly developed into the Friday, like ace of the staff. And um, I always enjoyed going out there on Fridays and trying to set the tone and kind of give my guys after me the put them in the best position to succeed and kind of uh, set those lineups up for the weekend and everything like that. So um, I went from learning how to eat up innings to how to be the main guy and be uh, what other teams focus on and all that stuff. Absolutely. And, you know, just looking at your numbers, you did, like you said, your sophomore year, 107 and two thirds, uh, your junior 85 innings before 35 more or 38 more with the twins. In 2019, you worked 125 and two-thirds innings in Cedar Rapids, which, again, another great place, I think, to play ball. That would be uh, quite the atmosphere. Um, want to talk a little bit. Now, when I talked to Ramon Varego earlier in the season, you know, I asked about you. I asked about Cole Sands. Um, and he talked about at Instructs last year, you were kind of the name that kept coming up no matter who I talked to. And, and that came through media-wise, too, I guess. But Borrego basically said he had a report on you, and it basically said, eh, 92, 93, good slider. And then all of a sudden you're on the mound, and he sees 96 and 97. So he had to go talk to Alec Passon and basically say, okay, we got to watch this guy. So talk a little bit. Obviously, the 2020 season is a tough year. It's completely a lost year for most minor league players. But somehow you were – able to take advantage of it and add a few miles per hour. So what was your process? What did you do during the pandemic? Were you, were you working with a coach or pitching coordinator often or on your own? Yeah. So the twins did a great job of staying in touch with us throughout the pandemic. Like I was talking to a pitching coach, a strength coach and a trainer every week. So they did a great job keeping tabs on us, sending out, information stuff for us to do making sure we're healthy all that stuff making sure we have everything we need all the supplies we need and um so they did a great job um doing that and for me it was just kind of getting back to basics and being able to kind of control my routine every week so it was kind of an opportunity because nothing else was going on for me to really um invest and take advantage of the time we were having so I was able to get in a really good routine where I was working out really consistently, um, being able to try some stuff, experiment a little bit, um, as well as just continue to work on my craft. Um, and I actually was able to develop a really nice community in the Richmond area of professional guys who were looking to get work in. So we were able to kind of set up these like sandlot games every once in a while where I could face some good hitters, face some good competition and, it turned out two of the better hitters um, that we faced this year, or one of the better hitters we faced this year was right down the street from me. So I got to face him a ton, and um, it was it was really cool to see all those guys really coming together to work together. Um, and another thing I was doing, I, I found a trainer in Richmond uh, named Glenn Fluger with RBA Athletes um, that he took me under his wing, showed me a bunch of stuff. We experimented with some stuff and I told him like, 
what I was kind of working on, what I wanted to work towards and how um, I wanted to gain more velo and all that stuff. And he gave me some really good exercises and was able to really work with me. And I'm still working with him this fall. Um, so I don't know what ended up causing the jump. I know a lot of people want to give, tell me, Oh, where's the magic pill at? Like, I'll give it to you. But, um, it was a bunch of different factors and who knows if I would have played the 2020 season, I might've been that velo the whole time. But I think just viewing that time as an opportunity, as opposed to like a big detriment, I think was the biggest, um, the biggest factor in me having that jump. Absolutely. And obviously, um, I'm guessing seeing the success and the jump that you had from low A to double A and finding that success uh, had to be just, I guess, validating of the effort and the time that you put in last year that you were doing some of the right things. Um, last couple of minutes here with uh, Josh Winder, Twins prospect, uh, pitching prospect, reached triple A. Um, how much... How much do you think about the 40 man roster decisions that are coming at the end of the month is, do you think it's something that, you know, for instance, you and, and Cole Sands or Royce Lewis is obviously eligible. You spent time with him down in Fort Myers. Is it something guys talk about or are even aware of until it happens? Um, I think you're definitely aware of it. Um, you definitely know what's, what's happening and like, the time in your career and all that stuff. Like I'm not completely oblivious of it. Like I know my, my turn's coming up. Um, but as far as it's affecting my day-to-day -day life or what I'm doing every day, I, it's out of my hands. That decision's not made by me. So there's nothing I can do to control it or anything like that. So whatever happens, happens. Uh, I'm just going to keep, keep my head down and keep working and try to be the best baseball player I can be. That's kind of the motto and the, the mantra I've told myself ever since I come into pro ball because so much is out of your control, where you play, um, what your role is, starter, reliever. Like that's so out of your control. You just got to try to maximize your opportunity and maximize your potential as a player. And then you can really see where you can, you'll end up because it'll eventually correct to reflect where where you're at no absolutely um one more kind of baseball related topic and i'm sure i'll come up with another one in a bit but let's go back to the draft you know coming out of vmi which again good baseball school but i think i mentioned earlier if you make it or when you make it to the big leagues you'll be the third guy including i think reed garrett just uh in 2019 and i know he's played in japan the last couple of years right. um you know, number one, what would that mean for you? But but what were your expectations heading into the draft? Um, you know, seventh round, is that a round where you were expecting to go? Were you talking to a lot of scouts or or were your coaches kind of taking care of that for you? No, yeah. Um, I guess going into the year, I was pretty highly thought of. So I ended up talking to a bunch of teams, a bunch of scouts before the year. Um, which was way different than it had been in the past at VMI. Like you've never really had those meetings and stuff like that at VMI, but there was five to six guys every, every week coming by and talking to uh, me and a couple other of our other guys who had um, some major league potential and major league aspirations. Um, so it was, it was kind of interesting to like, I don't know. It was a learning experience of how to throw in front of like scouts and throw with expectations and all that stuff. Um, so if you look at my stats, like my junior year stats are way worse than my sophomore year. Um, and I think that does have a little bit to do with me kind of throwing to the scouts as opposed to throwing to the other team and trying to get out. So that was a big learning experience in my career of how to like manage those expectations and kind of make sure I don't get out of what I'm doing and kind of giving my power away to an external factor as opposed to like keeping my head down and staying on task. Um, so that was, that was a big learning experience for me. So I think I slid on a, a couple people's boards um, going into the draft, but I was expecting to go between the fifth and the 10th, probably closer to the 10th than the fifth. Um, but um, couldn't tell me that on that day. I thought I was going in the fifth. But uh, <laughs> yeah, third. Started, uh, <laughs> right around that Twins pick, I started getting some calls from them and a couple other teams who were right, right before or right after them. 
Um, and we were just kind of going back and forth with numbers and figures and stuff like that. And I ended up seeing it on my phone before I got a call from the twins, which was kind of crazy. I was like, Oh, I just got picked. And I told my mom and she was freaking out of course, but, um, yeah, ended up getting a call right after and it was, it was a really special day and, um, definitely a memory I'll, I'll, I'll remember for a long time. Yeah, no question. Um, if anyone's got any last minute questions, please feel free to get them in right now. I want to ask, you know, um, away from baseball and I'm, you know, a big believer and you got to get away sometimes either just to rest or to have other hobbies and interests. What are your other hobbies and interests? What do you enjoy doing in the off season? And, you know, maybe even in those occasions during the season when you do get some time. Oh yeah. I'm a, I'm a big like movie buff. So if you can see, I got some posters. I don't know which way I'm going. Yeah. Right there. There you go. There uh, you I got go. some posters in my room and stuff like that. So I'm a big movie buff. So if you give me two hours during the season, I'll sit down and watch a movie or go to the theater. Um, so COVID obviously kind of ruined that for, for a time there. But um, yeah. So if you ask any of my teammates or anything like that, they know, they know I'm crushing movies all the time on the bus, all that stuff. So. Is there a specific genre of music that you or of movies that you specifically go after? Um, anything that's good. I'll watch anything and um I I do a lot of research on what I watch and all that stuff. So I don't want to waste my time watching a <laughs> watching a subpar movie. So I'll, I'll listen to what the critics say and um kind of come up with my own opinion of it afterwards. Yeah. Are you uh so in the off season do you do you stream or are you a Netflix game? Do you watch uh, or do you uh do you watch a lot of series too then? Um yeah, I watch, watch a decent amount of series, but yeah, it's Netflix, HBO Max, Hulu, all 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 of them. So um yeah, I, I spend a lot of time a lot of time watching and all that stuff and go to the theater too. So I, me and my girlfriend went to go see Dune a couple of weeks ago and that was really really a cool experience. So you still got, even though it's on HBO Max, you still got to get to the I had movie. to go. I had to go. That's one of my favorite directors. Uh, he's made some amazing, like, visual movies in the past, so I knew it was going to be something I would not regret going to the theater and watching. <laughs> um, former Twins relief pitcher, I think for three years, Trevor Hildenberger was a, a film uh, major at Cal Berkeley, Oh, wow. uh, and, and he went there for five years. So he was totally into that and the music scene or the movie scene. And mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, maybe that's a side question. What was your area of study at VMI? And uh, are you having only gone there three years? Are you close to a graduation? Is that something you want to do? Yeah. So I was a econ business major um, at VMI. So it's not a double major. It's just kind of like a catch all for the business department. Um, so I was actually, so I was drafted in the spring of my junior year, played, um, rookie ball at Elizabeth and, and then came back to school and finished, um, that fall. So I was lucky enough. I came in to VMI with a bunch of credits from high school. So I was able to take like a semester off the normal, like four year degree. So VMI was really great, um, working with me cause I ended up showing late, showing up late to school and, um, if you know anything about BMI, it's a big rules place. So having to miss class and all that stuff was was a, in question. So I had to get a bunch of approvals and talk to the dean and all that stuff. And they were really, really flexible and worked with me and um, made sure I got my degree and all that stuff. So, um, yeah. I could probably keep talking all day, but I do want to respect your time. Two questions left. And the first one I think is fairly quick. You go fastball, slider. Do you have a third, a fourth pitch that you're working on? Or I guess what pitches are you comfortable with? Or which ones are you trying to maybe uh, take to the next level? Yes, yeah, so I'm forcing fastball, slider guy. Um, and then I mixed, I started developing a changeup in 2019. And it's finally gotten to the point where it's, I feel like it's a weapon for me and I can um, throw it a ton to lefties and I want to start mixing it into righties as well. Um, so, um, and then I also have a curveball. So the curveball is kind of the work in progress right now. Um, and it's not necessarily trying to make it better, just make it more consistent and make it so I feel confident throwing it in games in any situation, any count. 
that type of deal. So um, the curveball was actually my bread and butter going through high school and college. And then I kind of developed uh, the cutter slider there in my sophomore year of my um, at VMI. And that's just slowly like kind of eaten, eaten into the curveball usage and um, effectiveness. So we're trying to trying to resurrect the curveball here um, uh, this off season. And in, in true me style, that was question one, but this is one B uh, kind of getting to know you a little bit and talking to you or, or you know, reading things about you. Um, I have to think that you really enjoy the analytical and technological means that are available to you in pro ball, but I'm guessing weren't at VMI, but did that take some adjustment or do you really enjoy it or how do you personally use it? And again, I don't want to waste your time. So feel free to lightning round it if you want. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, well, I think we didn't really have much access to it at VMI. So my first time getting um, exposed to it was in Elizabeth Tent. and um, the twins did a great job explaining it and um, explaining what everything mean. Um, so it was really easy for me to kind of grasp it and kind of figure it out. Um, I've always been a pretty good student, pretty smart guy. So I was able to kind of put everything together and kind of figure out like what I thought was important and um, what kind of mattered to my profile and how I pitch and all that stuff. Um, so the twins actually sent me a rap soto in 2020, which I think was um, very, very important to my development and very important to my work and having something I can kind of base my work off of and kind of like guest test revised type deal. Um, so yeah, I, I try to get my hands on anything I can, uh, anything I can get and like uh, big scouting report, all that stuff guy. So. And again, I kind of a follow up too, as you mentioned, working on a curveball. you've got the fastball, you got the slider um, change up, but the curveball. The guy that was drafted two rounds in front of you and you've been teammates with is Cole Sands. And he's got just from watching on, you know, MILB.TV, he's got a curveball. Do you oh, guys work together? Do you guys get along? Is there a, 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 a good working relationship, even understanding you're both trying to get to the same place? And, you know, there's com competition in that too? Yeah, I don't know. I don't really think about it. I don't really think about it as I'm directly competing with them. I, I know that's what it looks like from the outside, but just being on like a team together, you're always rooting for like success for your, for your teammates and all that stuff. And um, me and Cole get along really well. We roomed together in spring training, roomed on the road this year. Um, so he's, he's a great fun loving like um, guy and he just goes out there and throws the heck out of it, man. So I love watching him pitch and uh, kind of picking his brain because he loves making adjustments and kind of picking everybody's brain and changing some stuff up. So, um, yeah, that's definitely a guy I've talked to. Unfortunately, like he just kind of has this natural knack of spinning the baseball really well, which I don't have. So it's kind of tough for me to kind of mirror my um, game or tailor my game to what he does. Um, but, yeah, he's a he's a guy we love. I love talking to and kind of bouncing ideas off of and all that stuff. Well, and it's, it's fun. You know, I mean, there's no one cookie cutter way to be a big league pitcher. And it's fun to see how you go about it, how Cole goes about it. And on your rotation, I mean, Valamont throws a little bit different. Shulfer throws a little bit different. You guys have some talent and there's a lot of good pitchers in the organization. So I am going to go to that last and final question okay. because I've already taken up way more of your time than I said I would. And I do apologize, and I thank you very much. But um, goals for the off season, um, you know, are there certain things that, you know, you really kind of want to accomplish over the off season, or maybe you know trips you want to take, or anything you know on or off the field for your for your off season? Yeah, so I had my big trip. I went down to St. Simons, Georgia, for um, Austin Schofer's wedding. So that was kind of my big like week-long trip stopped in charleston with my girlfriend and then headed down to the wedding and had an awesome weekend down there with a couple of other guys in the twins organization and just hung out and like it was really good good to see everybody um as far as baseball wise i'm just continuing to work on my health and making sure i'm healthy and strong and ready to go in the spring um so that'll kind of take more shape as i start throwing again but just kind of getting a feel for all the pitches and making sure I can um, 
compete once I get down to Florida um, for spring training. That's that's kind of the goal. So I'll continue spinning the curveball, getting more comfortable with the grip and all that stuff. But um, that's kind of the goal for right now. And then continue to get after in the weight room, get more explosive, faster, stronger, the whole deal. Absolutely. That's that's fantastic. And again, certainly want to thank you very much for your time. It's been a lot of fun. As I always do, I say 20 to 25 minutes and here we are at 40, but uh, I really appreciate your thought filled answers and all that. And uh, I know that our listeners do too. And if you're listening live or later, you can listen on uh, Twins Daily Facebook, Twitter, um, YouTube. We're going to have it on the videos page on twinsdaily.com and it'll be on the uh, the podcast, wherever you download podcasts real shortly. With that, thank you, Josh Winder. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and have yourself a, a great weekend. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Seth. I appreciate you having me on, man. Absolutely. Thank